Well, hello there, humans, hippies, other things, hope you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and whoever you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to Channel Bushka. Today's video is about this bigger change thing here on the World of Tanks Blitz Discord server, the official Discord server. They have a coming soon section, and this is the coming soon section from yesterday. They posted this. I do think this is great by Wargaming. Uh, back in the old yesteryear, as we are fond of talking about, the nostalgia grows thick and fast around World of Tanks Blitz. The coming soon section wasn't a thing. It was actually under absolute lock and key. You couldn't report testing stuff. You couldn't, if you were driving a testing tank, um, there was no way for the world to find out. And they just really kept it under wraps. Uh, some people released info early and all that, and that was always a big hullabaloo and their secret telegram channels. And all those things still exist probably, but uh, they're a lot more transparent about it now. And that's just kind of sucked the air out of a lot of guys and girls who used to release this stuff prior, and data mine it and had friends in wargaming who, I don't know, needed extra money for the mortgage. Who knows? But whatever the case may be, I do like this. Uh, I like this public... Uh, public release early because it always gives people an idea on what they need to grind, uh, what tanks are going to be copying a flogging, what the, the flogging is going to look like. And then they listen to the feedback and they make changes. And you can see here, this is a, a list that is actually not all the changes. I mean, there's a lot of tanks you can't see there, like the FE4202, but it also lists, um, it doesn't list those tanks. It just lists the things that aren't actually going to happen or things that have been reversed after testing. And this is why they call it balancing and, you know, it's it's really nice. List of readjusted balance changes. Um, and this is after open testing. I think this is great. But the first one I want to talk about is the grill. I actually, I'll show you a video that I uh, did earlier. In fact, seven years earlier. This is from June the 23rd of 2016. And this is the grill. Uh, this is the grill on release. And... The reason I want to talk about this, now we're not talking about a light tank or a medium you can hear how excited I am. The reason I'm talking about this is because 750 alpha, 0.27 dispersion stock. Okay. So that was the initial state of the grill, right? It was released with two, uh, sorry, it was loose 0.27 dispersion. I actually think it was on 0.25 and then they changed that because at the time, the best gun in the game was like 0.29 or 0.3 and that was the Leo 1. Uh, and they've done a lot of buffing and nerfing since then. It also went 60 kilometers an hour. It had better, uh, better, turret traverse and everything and it could uh hit for 750 alpha which was wild those numbers have obviously been nerfed across the board that's still got the um the good old uh heat pen of 334 but its ap pen went from 269 or whatever it was all the way up to 300 where it is now it dropped a lot of speed it's dropped it's had camo rating they also didn't just drop speed off it they made it less powerful the engine used to really kick and it used to have reasonably good acceleration and such. All that got changed. Um, and it's interesting to me that the grill is one of those tanks that is just forever on the chopping block. It's another patch. It's another grill nerf or something. But I like the fact that they haven't gone all the way down. And one of the reasons it gets nerfed is they have the numbers. They have the heat maps of where people sit. Uh, they have the results. And you've got to remember, like, this isn't like, you watch myself. I'm an average kind of YouTuber. I do about 60 to 65%. I mean, sometimes I'll have tanks where I'll have 70% win rate. Other times I'll have tanks where it's 55 to 58. But right? just some tanks I'm good at, some tanks I'm not good at. Um, and they don't balance it off like just me. They balance it for everybody, right? And they've got to make sure that you can't have a tank like the original grill. Unicums used to run around in that thing and just pants whole teams. Like with the speed, the mobility, it was really, really good. Um, and it's it's been a difficult one for them to balance. The same with the FB4202. So they've gone back and and instead of nerfing the shell velocity, they're not going to do that. 
and they're actually going to raise the heat pen um, to 360 millimeters, which is massive, and give it more turret traverse. So kudos for the grill. Uh, the other one I want to talk about here is the, I mean, the TVP, fuck, like, come on, excuse the language. Like, if you can't see that the TVP needs a nerve, I can't help you with any concepts of game balance. Balance is for everyone, not just for the tanks you like or dislike. That thing is broken. It's too good right now. And that's that's just how it is. You have to have some kind of balance in the force. Um, I want to talk about the IS-4, right? I'll show you this. Uh, where is the... Here we go. Let's have a look here. I really don't like the IS-4 getting touched at all. I really don't like it. Um, I think it's a terrible, terrible idea uh, to nerf the armor profile of the IS-4. And um, where is, say, let's go for the Type 71. Um, yeah, that's a Type 71. That's the IS-4. Let's give it heat. All right, so that's the Type 71 frontally with IS-4 heat. Now, IS-4 heat running calibrated shell is filthy, but just with standard good old heat, you're looking at about 340 millimeters of pen. A lot of pen. If you swap those around, the IS-4 doesn't appear to be penable. So you're like, IS-4's armor profile, broken, right? It's, it's something you need to understand about this. And I'm going to show you right now why this is something you really need to let's use the Jag Panzer E100 if you are a good player and you know your numbers and you know the statistics and the armor profiles of tanks and you are in a Jaeger Roo and you're looking at an IS-4 and you can get a shot where you are even slightly above him he can be angled out like that and you're like damn it man I can't pen this guy all I can see is this really red side and it's an auto bounce or you could just use HE and shoot him on the deck and you are going to do 400, 500, 700, massive damage all the time to this tank because it's very low profile coupled with the fact that it has a flat deck means that you can see here, let's have a look at the uh, penetration. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, X-ray armor. The deck's 30 millimeters, 30 millimeters. Like it's legitimately a 30 millimeter deck. And it's on a tank that it is very, very low profile. So anytime you're in a big TD and you're facing an IS-4 that's side scraping, you're like, oh, I can't do anything about that, bro. That's no good. You just splash that deck, splash the crap out of the deck. Hell, any tank with a decent HE round will still do damage to the IS-4's deck. And it's one of the best kept secrets out there, especially amongst really good players that run this a lot. I've talked about it before, but not very often. And no one watches my channel anyway, so who freaking cares? But that's why I'm I'm not particularly happy with uh, the IS-4 armor nerfs. I don't think that they're called for, um, especially considering how much pen is available out there. Like these AP pens um, for $299 on the Jaegeru, $380 on your heat, like... I mean, how many tanks are there with 300 millimeters of pen now? There's so many tanks that can pen frontally. And sure, it's a bit of a bully when it comes to mediums and that. But I don't think that's a bad thing. I think you give up mobility. Like, it's still an easy tank to get around. You give up mobility and you, you give up a lot to be able to be a proper frontline heavy tank these days. It's a hard job uh, at tier 10. Harder than pretty much any other tier. Uh, there are so many tanks that can just rip you despite the fact you've got the best armor profiles in the game. Um, where were we? Uh, let's have a look back here at this. Where is it? No, 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 no. This, right. Um, the Kranwagen engine power change, it's going to get more force powers. The AMX M4 MLE 54. I feel for people with tanks like the AMX M4. I really do. Uh, because it's so freaking expensive to buy a T10 collector tank. It is really expensive. Uh, I tried to pick up the, 
uh, Caro Glitch, I spent about 12,000 gold. And I mean, I know I've got a press account, but it's not my account, right? So I, I want to play my account. And I didn't get the Caro. And it was like, it sucked. Really sucked. And to confirm it and absolutely get it, I was going to have to spend 25,000 gold or something. And I was like, I just can't, I can't afford to, to do that this month. I mean, we all got bills, baby. And you can't always afford to do that. So when you spend that money and you get the tank and then they nerf it, oh, that sucks. It really sucks. <laughs> um, yeah, it, the, the tank weight will grow up. The tank weight will go up. Um, and the armor will not change. And the tank will not receive the reactive armor consumable either. It feels like a big kick in the guts there. Uh, I also don't love the Minotauro. I find that play style incredibly boring. Um, which is saying something because I have a thousand games played in the T110E3. So I've experienced that play style many, many moons ago. Uh, in terms of just drive forward in a TD and surprise people with a big gun on the heavy line. Um, but I'm surprised it's getting buffed because I see so many of them in games and even when they're driven by Muppets, they still do what they do, which is just go forward, young man, and press the button. So I am surprised that that, that is getting the ass. Uh, that is getting a buff. Uh Super Conqueror HE pen, they're really on a kick to get rid of cheap hash. I don't know why. I really don't understand it. The only people who get a benefit out of cheap hash are good players who actively look for targets with different ammo types. I don't get why you would turn it into a tank where you can't actively look for targets with different ammo types or it really cuts down. It may be that uh, there are certain tanks like, uh, I don't know, Batchats or Sheridans who are experiencing a lot of pain from those tanks. I mean, they'd have those numbers. The Let's have a look. Let's have a look again. Let's just, I mean, we may as well check it out, right? Uh, let's put the... T10 Heavy UK Super Conqueror. Okay. And let's put over here the uh, ba, 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 light T10 France Francais Batch Chatillon 25T. And let's use Hesh. I mean, you can pen the lower plate at the moment. There's parts of it you can pen if you can hit the shot. But it's certainly not a guarantee. Um, I mean, you can pen the sides. It's 41 millimeters. You'll still be able to pen even after they, um, so it's 105 or 110, sorry. It's 105 millimeter on the, uh, FE4202. That's why I always think of 105. You can always pen the ass like, but that's 15 and 31 millimeters. So it's really only going to make a difference, um, on these areas here, which are even then, I mean, yeah, you won't be able to pen any of that. If you drop that down to one, yeah, if it's under 100 millimeters of pen, the only place you're going to be able to pen the batch out frontally is on the lower plate. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's for tanks like that, and they just, they're getting pounded by heavies. But Super Conqueror is a big, fat bubba. It, it struggles to move around, right? And um, yeah, I, I don't see that as something that, is necessarily important or needs to be done. I'm not sure why, like the bat chat not getting hit by the super conqueror is on the bat chat. It's pretty easy to get around a super conqueror unless there's like four tanks left and then you just should be dead anyway. Um, yeah, the object 260 thing, I don't know. Object 260 has been a tank that has not had, um, not had a lot of love. It's never really hit right. You will occasionally see it in uh, competition, but very rarely. Uh, I mean, you see shh, tons of P TVPs in the comp makeup at the moment. So I don't think that it's a surprise that it's getting the ass. 
but the 260, yeah, I don't know. They're going to slightly in, improve the IS force hull traverse speed, but I, I really don't understand why it's getting an armor nerf. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me. E50M, instead of you reducing the APCR shell velocity, will decrease the gun accuracy a bit. Jeez. They really are leaning into specific roles for these tanks. Um, by that, I mean, like they want the E50M to be the brawler, the heavy tank medium. But, I mean, I don't like it having APCR. You want AP, you don't want APCR. AP gets, I think it's five degrees of normalization. So, okay. Um, oh, God. How to create stuff that you didn't know you had to explain. Okay, so if you're looking at a tank with AP and I like red green, man, turn red green back on. This is the wrong tank to be doing this with. Uh, heavy tank, let's go with the AMX, okay? This is a good good example. AP, right? So you can see uh, APCR, okay? How am I going to explain this? It's so hard to describe. Basically, you cut angle out. So if you've got AP and the AP on this does 259, what's another tank that has APCR that does 259? So I could show this. Um, see, that's green there, right? Uh, who's got the APCR that'll do about 259? That'd be... Ooh, medium... Not the FV, no, uh, no French. 30B, does it have APCR? Basically, it gives you the opportunity to pin higher angles rather than uh, something with APCR or with heat at, say, 250 millimeters of heat pen versus 250 millimeters of AP pen. The AP pen will actually pen more. Uh, it normalizes against an armor's angle. So it, if it's a flat piece of armor, everything's fine. It's all the same. But once the armor starts angling, you want to be firing AP with the same penetration rather than premium heat. And it's why the, the huge change for the STB-1 that a lot of people aren't talking about is that it's getting that filthy premium AP that the Ho Re gets where it actually gets five degrees of normalization. I'm pretty sure it's five degrees. I've been away for a while, but I haven't been away for that long, surely. Uh, AP normalization world of tanks blitz. Yeah, five degrees for AP, uh, two degrees for APCR. Uh, that is to King Regastus on Reddit. Thank you very, very much, amigo. So it reduces the impact angle of your shell by five degrees or two degrees, respectively. This reduces the effective armor of the enemy. This guy's explained it so much better than I have. To put it simply, when hitting angled armor, you will have more penetration. You should be a fucking YouTuber. What a legend. King Regastus, I'm giving you a, uh, I'm giving you some up, up arrow on that, baby. Good on you. Uh, you got 23 upvotes for that, and deservedly so. So the STB one's going to have this tiny decrease in um, DPM by running premium shells, but it's going to keep that crazy AP normalization of five degrees against angled armor. And it's going to have huge base penetration increase as well. So the STB-1 um, is really going to be buffed. And I think that's one of the reasons why here the STB-1's maximum force speed will not be increased. The reload time will be reduced by 0 0.73 seconds instead of 0 0.96. So it was going to get a bigger reload buff to, uh, to its gun. I don't know why, man. It's such a good tank already. Anyway. That's just this stuff that happened. And I think that that's cool. And I'm really excited to be talking about it. I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of a chat and a little bit of a run through some of the upcoming changes. 
or as they are at the moment, they are still open to adjustment. Uh, if you want to catch all this stuff in real time, then make sure you jump on the Water Tanks Blitz official English server. Uh, it's Cracker Jack. I will put an invite link in my uh, in the description of the the video. So check that out down below, and remember to subscribe to my channel too. This is good. This is what I do. Till next time, look after yourself. Stay safe in the battlefield, and bye for now.